Hello everyone and welcome back to my hard time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I need to refuel the station so that it can refuel the DRK so that the DRK can go over to Gilly and plant a flag to fulfill this contract. And so that's the plan. I'm not going to bring Jeb, Bill or Bob back down to get uh, their experience noted. I think I'm just going to continue on with this. And so I know that uh, we have to bring them back before they are going to get those little buttons and all, so no worry about that now. Uh, we'll just uh, proceed. It's not like uh, anything that they're doing is going to jeopardize this mission. The fact that they don't have their experience noted it isn't going to cause any problems, I don't think. So uh, the main thing is testing this out again. And so I've redone the station refueler so that it uses this uh, CSEM brand adapter with the fuel in instead of what it had before. And I've tucked in the engines below this uh, below this tank using this other 2.5 meter tank, and so that looks a little bit more streamlined. And uh, I think it carries a little bit less fuel than before. Uh, that was intentional because we we really need to make sure that the launcher can get back down. The launcher has had modifications. It now has its probe core on the outside here instead of uh, being having the whole stack sit on top of the probe core what we've got in there if I can get uh, uh, is actually two reaction wheels here and of course the parachutes so yeah now that's what's supporting it of course I've added struts just in case and uh, yeah I think that is about all as far as changes are concerned to this Still, the tricky part is wondering whether this is going to remain stable, balanced on touchdown. It's not that wide. In fact, I designed it wider. I, I designed it without this tank or this tank. Uh, it was all sitting... Well, I think uh, maybe this tank was still there. Uh, this tank wasn't. So it was a shorter stack. And, well, I decided I needed more fuel, so that's why it's like this. So I guess we could add fuel outboard, but that would change the look. We'll see. Uh, it's it's an expensive project, no mistake about it. But yep, we'll uh, try it out. Um, I wonder if uh, well, sending a Kerbal to plant a flag on Gilly, this might be a very expensive option when you think about it. Yeah, I mean honestly, we're doing things a little bit more expensively than. Uh, than we should with the DRK. The DRK has uh, unfortunately the same flaws as the space shuttle. It is actually more expensive than just launching a rocket with a curb lawn to plant a flag on Gilly. Hmm. Oh well, anyway, let's not think too much about it right now. Let's just go ahead with this and then uh, we'll ponder the economics of it uh, a little bit later. We are in alignment for Eve, by the way. I already did that time warping. And uh, when you think about it, I mean, of course, our Kerbals are more comfortable on their way to their interstellar locations on the DRK than they would be in a pod, so I guess there's that going for it, and you can't really put a price on that, right? Alright, here we go. Looks a little bit asymmetrical, doesn't it? I don't know. I can throw down a little bit. Looking at it this way, it doesn't look too tall. Maybe. I wouldn't want to try and splash down with it, though. Well, pretty smooth so far, but that's not the big problem around here. Should have Ashen Group the main sails to shut down, but let me shut down them now. But I'll activate them before re entering because they're more efficient in the atmosphere. But for now, we can go with just the center engine. And since I don't have any re reserve fuel on this, I'm just hoping that it makes orbit with some fuel left over. But I don't think that'll be dangerous for us. Let's uh, leave it here. I'll deal with that 
after decoupling the mission. So not enough fuel as it is. But I'll take it for now. Okay, throttle safe. Still a lot of wiggling though. I'm just going to use the time warp trick to stabilize that for now. Alright, uh, decoupling the... Wow, it's still turning for some reason. Lists. Alright, let's decouple. Not too sure I like the way it was messing about. Let's get the parachutes off on a different stage, shall we? Alright. Now maybe it's safe to activate the entrance. Ooh, okay. Now, this mission can perhaps get into a better orbit. Okay, I take it back. Maybe it can't. What's going on here? You're a decoupler, aren't you? We've decoupled. Please tell me we've decoupled. We haven't really decoupled, have we? What the heck has happened? Okay, we're controlling from here. This isn't part of our vessel. But it still feels like we're connected to... to the Taurus. That's not good. Okay, well this is not good, is it? Okay, well this is, this is definitely a bust, but maybe we can retrieve the fuel anyway. What we need to do is we'll have the DRK rendezvous with this. Yeah. So I'm going to wait till Apoapsis and we are going to have the DRK rendezvous. We're going to use the the Taurus B to boost us into a full proper orbit. And then the DRK will have to do the rest. Let's Make sure that we open the docking board shield before this whole thing loses power eventually. Oh no, well this should have solar panels. At least those will work. This is going to be a heck of a hard thing to dock with considering it likes to move about and says stay steady. Oh, so it has no control. It at uh, this portion does not have any control over the reaction wheels or its own engines right now because the engines aren't going to provide thrust. I guess maybe we could force our way. I mean, let's see. Can we just sort of blow up that little decoupler or something? I don't think so. And this is just wasting fuel. Okay. All right, waiting till apoapsis. Come to think of it, maybe we should stay in a low orbit for now and wait until we sort of catch up to the station. It'll save some effort on the DRK's part in that case. But we'll at least boost to 70 kilometers so we don't have to do physical time warp. So I must have attached the decoupler to the wrong node. There are a lot of nodes at the bottom of this refueler. So I can't imagine. It should just be the node at the bottom of this tank. I mean, the, the only other nodes should be these engines and obviously it wouldn't be placed right if it was attached to those nodes. Strange. Even if it was the opposite direction we would at least separate with the separate from the Taurus. 
So I don't know what's going on with that. That's a great disappointment. What the? Whoa! 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 Oh, come on! <sighs> Random unplanned disassembly on... On the end of time warp! Okay, well... <sighs> we now have Kessler Syndrome. <laughs> Uh huh. Well, that was unnecessary. Even the little grid segments are individualized. Little individual fuel tanks, and wow, just a complete mess. Some of it is coming back down. Random locations. Some of it might cause problems for our station. This is. This is quite a disaster. Um, well, we won't be using that refueler and the Taurus again. Uh, what can I say? It seems like uh, this is not all the all the stuff we've got going. Uh, let's see. Um, we should go to the tracking station for a sec. Oh my god. 87 pieces of debris. I mean, not all of them from from just this explosion, but... You can see the cluster there. That's a lot of debris. You can see I'm just mousing over and you can see all the different orbits that are involved in that debris field. And no, I'm not gonna just go ahead and uh, clean it up from here. No, we're gonna... that's gonna be a risk now. That's gonna be a risk. And, um, well, a legendary demise of our Station Refueler 2 and Taurus B. And we, were, we weren't in physical time warp, we were in regular time warp at that point. So... Yeah, that's very annoying. So what do we do? Um, you know, I have some probes here though, but these are mostly on suborbital. Well, good thing we didn't try and send the DRK before it decided to explode, and then the DRK would be caught in that mess, but... I think we have to bring the DRK down now. I mean, the fact is, I think... I think the lesson we've learned is maybe the DRK is too big and needs too much fuel. Certainly for this kind of mission to Gilly. Doesn't mean uh, we couldn't use it for other missions, but we'll have to see. I mean, with Gilly, we don't even need a separate lander. We could just sort of hover the spacecraft above the ground and let the Kerbal hop out, right? It wouldn't be a big thing. Okay, I think we'll just bring the DRK back down. I think it's got enough fuel for that left. Or no, we should probably give it a little bit more fuel. Okay, here we go. Alright, let's just undock and proceed. Alright, well, let's see what our altitude is. Hmm, that should be okay, but let me give it a little bit more than that. really don't want to have to go around after all. Okay, I just realized something. For some reason, actually group 3 is working to change this from air breathing to closed close cycle, but not its symmetry pair. Didn't I launch this not being able to use action groups? Wasn't this not configured for action groups and now but now it only has action groups on part of the engines? What the heck is going on here? Uh, well, anyway, I'm not gonna try and use action groups. I'll have to remember to just uh, 
let's just I'm not going to use rocket mode so let's just toggle to air breathing right now I wonder when I was testing action groups whether I did I close the air intakes well they seem to be open right now which is what they should be okay one of the action groups is to close the air intakes okay well hopefully they're all open no that one isn't what the so half of my air intakes okay well these let's make sure they're open we'll be needing those soon I'm oh, glad I've checked what the heck oh these these so what these are open already but these aren't well that's sneaky of it so uh, so I have like action groups operating on half of the things that they're supposed to operate on that's not very nice okay well we'll just have to deal with that okay we do not need to be in a nose up profile I'm pretty sure we're undershooting rather than overshooting. Nose up would be good to increase drag if we were overshooting or if we had some sort of re-entry heat worries but that's not the case here. The only worry we have is disassembly of the wings, right? That's the main worry. As far as undershooting is concerned, I think we have the range. I think we're okay on range as long as uh, we get to air breathing levels uh, once we hit the continent we should be fine we can cross the continent with the fuel that we have don't know if we uh, end up at air breathing levels before that I don't know how much range it has it's pretty light right now though I mean what uh, on launch we were talking about 50 tons now it's 23.5 tons So what we need is a small little crew transfer vehicle that can refuel at our new stations. But we're going to have to test that, flight test it, I mean. Wow, this thing is a little bit hard to maneuver. Well, I guess that makes sense. This just uh, reaction wheel controlling it right now. The air surfaces aren't really hitting air right now. Well, this thing can technically do air breathing at these levels, but I'll... Uh, See, maybe I can. Well, we're falling a little bit short. Far shorter than I thought we would. Okay, I think I better run the engines now. Okay, good, good, good. Let's stay high and fast. That'll give us better fuel economy. Almost level flight. Come on, try and get to level flight here. Having real pitch trim would be nice at this point. Alright, well we have KF KSC right there, so let's... Cut throttle a bit. I think we can start descending. Wow, this thing has a lot of range actually. Should really take some of those flyover contracts, the ones that uh, require visual surveys. This would be good for that sort of thing. Though, not so much for the EVAs. We need a VTOL, don't we? But let's not complicate our little dream chaser sort of thing. But a separate VTOL... VTOL aircraft would be nice. Oh dear. It is still not a fully... fully... upgraded runway. Don't know how this is gonna be. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, come on. Down, down. Shut down engine. Brakes, 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 brakes. Oh, 
Okay, well, Derek's shuttle is back down. We'll put on parking brakes, and I think we can recover a vessel. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we've got all of that done. 114 science earned. The Derek shuttle's nearly, well, I think the Derek shuttle itself is 100,000 funds, but we don't have, didn't have all the fuel back, so, but otherwise, we got it all all back 100% uh, of the total value and of course our crew gained experience let's take a look at how they are in the in the astronaut complex so Jeb got to level 2 Bill and Bob both at level 1 with just a little bit more to go for the next level looks like so yeah okay interesting but now give me some time to uh, build a little crew transport shuttle and uh, I think that's something I want to test out. Now the thing is, it's not going to be able to land at various locations. Obviously we need a lander for that, but maybe maybe using reusable rockets would be a better idea for that anyway. I want to use the Derek Show for stuff, but we'll have to think about that. Alright, anyway, let me... I, I, I want to have a crew transport shuttle anyway. Even if we did launch the Derek Shuttle and make it go to Gilly and all that, uh, we'd need some way to bring back people from the station maybe. Alright. Okay, I think I've got what I want here now. Um, lots to explain, actually. Uh, first of all, I'm not entirely sure the center of mass and center of lift are really being honest with me here. And that's because I just put the canard in front and it moved around a whole lot. Uh, originally, this was designed without the canard in front. It was designed with a third rapier on the tail, possibly a jet engine on the tail. But I decided, A, that wasn't strictly necessary for a 26.5 ton craft. Uh, B, I needed a docking port on the tail because if you remember the station, it uh, only has one docking port that can service a docking port like this. And we need that free for the Derek shuttle. So uh, it does have other 1.25 meter docking ports, but they wouldn't be accessible with this thing because it does it, uh, you know, the other parts of this would uh, smash up against the station. So we need one of these uh, sort of uh, protruding here and so that's why I put that there. It's not really great because of course when you think about this as a crew transfer vehicle they're not exactly going to be able to go through this part. This is a bunch of fuel tanks. I guess we could um, vaguely imagine a tiny little crawl space through these fuel tanks to that docking port but and that is what we're going to imagine, okay? just just for for the record but uh, so we had, we do have an extra docking port back there now uh, center mass well uh, yeah I, I didn't have the canard up front at first until I removed the engine so this was actually balanced with an engine in the back here and then I took off the engine and of course you know that the center mass would move up and then I decided to put the canard in order to move the center of lift up and then it went too far up, so I dumped. Yeah, I, I dumped the oxidizer. Right, I'm trying to remember my own steps. I dumped the oxidizer because uh, the center of uh, uh, lift was like over here somewhere. I dumped the oxidizer, and then I just tilted this thing up just a little bit. You can see uh, it has a little bit of dihedral there. And then suddenly the center of lift changed completely on me. So that's why I'm not trusting the center of lift right now. And if you've played around with uh, KSB, you know the center of lift can sometimes be a little bit deceiving. But uh, let's test it out. I mean, that's the best way to figure out whether uh, I'm just delusional or whether it's really a problem. I'm going to leave this oxidizer tank empty. We need at least one oxidizer tank empty because we got to be in liquid fuel mode for the ascent profile. You notice I call it Station Chaser. Uh, of course Dream Chaser is the tiny little shuttle that uh, Sierra Nevada Corporation is trying to make and is uh, trying to use as a cargo transport device right now because it was rejected as a crew transport for NASA. But uh, yeah, so I, I just call this Station Chaser after that. Um, it's pretty simple design. Uh, the wings are double layered. Okay, so just be aware of that. There is some slight rotation that complicates the wing design but nothing too complicated. It's basically a delta wing design 
except for the canard in front and there's not much else to say about it so let's see who are we going to get to test this thing it's a pretty dangerous thing we only have one pilot um, let's go to the astronaut complex can we pick up another pilot barbels kerman ribden kerman and barbels kerman well we might as well get both of them uh, we have a max of 12 huh uh, that, that's all I'm gonna get for now. I want to have Barbel Skirman do it. Okay, Barbel Skirman will be our test pilot. Let's bring this out to launch. But now we don't have action groups, and even though the Derek shuttle seem to have some action groups still active, even though I uh, didn't uh, have them, I'm not going to have them here. So we're going to be automatic switching. Maybe I'll just toggle mode. We'll see. Okay, here we are with Barbel Skirman. Throttle up, SAS on. Good intake here. We've got lots of intakes. We've got very similar intake configuration to the DRK, so. And we only have two engines to work with. Hmm. Alright, let's see how it goes. I haven't decided whether we'll bring it to orbit yet. Let's just see how it flies. I want to check out the proper rotation speed. So I'm going to start pulling up max now. So I've got full pitch. Okay. Oh, about 70 meters per second it looks like. Not bad since it's fully loaded right now. Balance seems fine. Oh, a little bit of uh, over rotation there. But if we see the little pitch gauge, it's not too far off. It's still being forced to push down a bit. Uh, we're losing speed. That's a little bit too much angle up here. It's a little bit off. It shouldn't have any uh, pitch down to keep things steady. Let's head for the island runway. Typical flyby routine. I'm pretty sure this has enough delta V in its current configuration to get to orbit. Uh, if you take a look at the liquid fuel and oxidizer, consider this is uh, less than 30 tons. It's about 28 tons. And we, uh, so we're about 60% uh, the mass of the Derrick shuttle. And yet we have uh, much more than 60% of the Derrick shuttle's fuel. No, I, I think we have more than 60%. So we're pretty well off. And we're not going to be carrying any cargo, it's just going to be Kerbals. I'd say 60%, but actually 28 tons out of 50 tons is more like 50... Was it 56%? 56%. Okay, let's go to chase view for the flyby. Let's shut down the engines and see how this thing glides. Now our rotation speed was about 70 meters per second, so probably don't want to get too far below that. I'd say it is pretty, pretty bad on the glide. You can see the angle of attack here. Still losing speed, too. Not bad. We seem to remain fairly stable despite being at a moderate angle of attack. Okay, pretty controllable. Not bad at all. 
Let's try for high altitude. Well, we've passed 20 kilometers. I think we'd better get Barbels into orbit just to get him back to the KSC. I'd hate to have to try and turn him around and uh, go back home in jet mode. Still gaining velocity at least. Thrust is going down but stable. Mainly watching for asymmetry between the two engines. I suppose the thing to do would be if uh, they don't switch before then, the switch when the thrust hits 175. That's the thrust of the rocket mode, I believe. Though there'll be a slight asymmetry in terms of fuel consumption. I think they're still drawing from the center right now, though. Should be. Okay, wait, uh, the right engine is going, well, no, it's switching between two numbers. That's not good. I'm going to throttle down for a sec here. Okay, we've got, uh, you can see the yaw is trying to correct for, ah, we've got some interesting situation here. Okay, I don't think automatic mode is doing its thing. Uh, yaw is pretty extreme. I'm gonna toggle and toggle. Okay, I'm gonna use RCS to help me stabilize this thing. Okay, I think we're okay. So much for automatic switching this time. Now, let's gain some altitude, shall we? I'll go for a 100 kilometer orbit, I think. I'm looking at the liquid fuel to make sure. We we'll want some reserve, of course, to get back down. Now, we're still low enough that it's got some drag on us. I think I'll just leave it be like that, and wherever it ends up, that'll be fine. Well, let's get vaguely... That's good enough. 104 by 87 for me, that's okay. Uh, yeah, well, I think all we need to do is plot the descent. I'm not going to rendezvous with the station this time. This is uh, strictly a test flight. Darn it, the uh, KSC. You know what? I'm not going to deorbit until the KSC is in daylight. How about that? It just occurred to me that we're still in the right transfer time for Gilly, aren't we? Oh, at least we're, we should still be pretty close. Um, yeah, that's about 54 degrees. We need to send a mission over there, uh, even if it's not the DRK. So, yeah, I think that's going to have to be a priority in the next episode. Okay, I think on this pass we'll aim to have the maneuver. Well, we only have 64 pieces of debris. Some of it must have deorbited. But I see this one is looking like it's... Well, it looks like it'll actually pass us. It looked like it was going to catch up to us and try and hurt us. But I think we'll be alright. Okay, well, that... Uh, well, we can do a little bit more. Alright. Let's try this out. Okay, flip around. It's got a bit of an oscillation as if we were riding a wave. Uh, I think it's stopping. Just a little bit of pitch oscillation. Obviously more more apparent when time warping. Hmm. This is not right. I feel a little bit nose heavy. Let me see. Shouldn't be. There's no reason to be nose heavy. We've even burned some mod propellant. Should by all rights be tail heavy. Well, RCS can keep it stable though. We still got. I need to apply quite a lot of pitch 
just to hold angle of attack it shouldn't be necessary let's see if we can alleviate it let's see if I do pump oxidizer for, well hmm yeah let's pump this oxidizer forward just a little bit it's not too far forward yeah that makes it worse doesn't it yeah that makes it worse so uh, pumping it back is making it better okay well then let's pump it into this tank and see what happens uh, actually let's pump it into this tank now we're not going to be burning oxidizer so this will remain where it is to keep us stable okay we can run the engines now I believe RCS off Pitch doesn't look too bad off. It wasn't really maxing out at least, even without moving the fuel, the oxidizer. Let's, I'm just checking maneuverability here. Okay, I think we're pretty good here. Still haven't cleaned up that uh, DRK debris there. I think that must be from from an actual full shuttle launch. It's one of those boosters that uh, we tried to bring back. Maybe lost lost it or now that we've lightened the load, maneuverability is not bad at all. We're going fairly slow. Angle attacks not not much it's okay just make sure chase plane view is proper come on come on okay we're down brakes 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 okay bumps Okay, and there we have it. Barbels Kerman has successfully tested a crew transfer vehicle currently named Station Chaser. And we can proceed like this. Let's recover this. So, as you can see, it's uh, 53,000 funds, about half what the DRK costs to transfer six Kerbals wherever we might want. Uh, obviously, first to a station, but then it can be refueled and then transferred to other locations. And uh, Barbos Kerman has gained two experience and advanced to level one. It's as simple as that. All right. So with that, I think I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.